Ahoy hoy, I'm Planner Walk. And why do a lot of prominent people that have the name Ken tend to be just wrong? Like you've got Ken Wheeler, Ken Ham, Ken Ring, Kent Hoven. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about one of those Kens. Can you guess which one? That's right, it's Ken Ham, the budget edition. Also known as Ken Ring. Don't worry, I will get round to Ken Ham and Kent Hovind at some point. So some people may be asking, okay, who is Ken Ring? And he's a New Zealander. Unfortunately, not all of us are sane. So Ken Ring became quite well known during the time of the Christchurch earthquakes as he thought that he could predict earthquakes using the moon. This, of course, earned him the title of the Moon Man and terrified heaps of people that didn't want to be in another earthquake. After that, it seems that most people forgot about him. So I wonder what he's been doing with his time since then. So if we look at his Facebook page, it appears as though he's become a weather forecaster. And just by simply going over to his website, we can get books that show us what the weather will be like for the next year. All for the low, low cost of 60 New Zealand dollars. Now some people may be thinking, okay, well that's not that bad, unless he's using the moon to predict the weather or something. And to that I say, yes, he does use the moon to predict the weather. But also, his Facebook feed is littered with batshit crazy nonsense about 5G and coronavirus. This, of course, has prompted people to tell Kenring that he should just go back to weather forecasting. Now, I would agree if it weren't for the fact that when it comes to weather forecasting, Kenring is a complete charlatan. For example, 11 days before Christmas last year, he decided to have a go at predicting the weather for Christmas Day, and he posted this. Now, at first glance, this looks completely legitimate. But hey, what's this in the top right? It looks like a tropical cyclone. And this is interesting. What an odd place to put quotation marks. It's almost as if this image was taken from somewhere else and altered just a teeny little bit to try and make Kenring look more professional. But surely Kenring doesn't have to resort to that, right? He is a professional after all. He can predict the weather using the moon. Nope! It was taken straight from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. Now if we look at the original chart, one of the most glaring issues is that it's from the 4th of January 2019. Nowhere near December 2019. And the tropical cyclone in the top right has a name. Tropical Cyclone Penny. So when it comes to this image, Ken Ring altered it in two ways. He removed the date so that people wouldn't realise that it's actually for the 4th of January, and he got rid of Penny in Tropical Cyclone Penny. So no matter how you look at it, this had to have been deliberate. But maybe it's just a visual to aid the post. Maybe it doesn't really mean anything. Wrong. When someone commented saying, Thanks Ken, SPACE COMMA! Is that tropical cyclone going to form and send rain down into the Hunter Valley? Ken Ring replied with, It becomes an extra tropical cyclone by the next day. Then as a low, it moves slowly into Queensland, then dies. I don't see Hunter getting anything. So not only did he take an image from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, when asked about the tropical cyclone in it, he acted as if that was going to be an actual thing. If that isn't direct evidence of him deliberately misleading his fans in order to try and make himself look more credible, then I don't know what is. Now some people may say, well sure that's being deceptive, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't know how to predict the weather. Now when it comes to the weather, there are heaps of instances in which Ken Ring gets it wrong. In fact, sometimes he gets it hilariously wrong. Like that time that he said that in January 2013, the lakes would be one of the driest regions in the South Island. But what actually happened? The lakes ended up getting an unusually high amount of rain. Or that time when people decided that they'd actually try to analyse Ken Ring's predictions and found that you'd get better predictions by simply averaging out the annual rainfall for a given area. Yet despite his predictions having been shown to be wrong multiple times, people still think that they're accurate. Like this person here, who says we follow Ken's predictions as the bible for our farm and he's always spot being on give a... spot been on... Spot been on give or take a few days. No capital much more accurate than the likes of Bomb. I find it hilarious that people would say that he's much more accurate than the Bureau of Meteorology when he copied a chart from the Bureau of Meteorology meant for earlier that year. 
But seeing as we're going by anecdote, allow me to share one, because I've found that if I want to know the weather, I can use something like MetService, and it will be accurate give or take about an hour. That is far better than Ken Ring's a few days. Now the reason why I've focused on Ken's weather predictions so far is because if someone is wrong about their own area of expertise, then they're probably going to be wrong in a lot of other things that they have to say. For example, if a lawyer is wrong about things when it comes to law, I'm not going to trust what they have to say about the scientific method. Yes, looking at you, Riley. So now that I've dealt with what he's supposedly an expert in, let's deal with some of his more nuttier claims, like this from earlier on in the video. So he says that someone's onto it, posting a picture of a tweet that says, consider 5G radiation creates poison at the cellular level producing exosomes identical to COVID-19 under a microscope. So there's a number of reasons why that tweet is wrong. Firstly, 5G radiation does not penetrate the skin. Secondly, there's no known mechanism as to how 5G radiation can create poison. Thirdly, here's a comparison between coronavirus and exosomes. Sure, they're both round, but they're not identical. For example, these two things are both round, definitely not identical. And in another post by Ken Ring, he brings up that time that the US government offered free healthcare to southern rural blacks, and then they intentionally injected them with syphilis. And then he asks, do you still want a coronavirus vaccine? Uh, yes Ken, I still want a coronavirus vaccine. One of the things that has become very prominent in fields such as medicine and psychology is an ethics committee, which any experiment that you want to do has to pass through an ethics committee to make sure it is ethical. These days, an experiment in which someone is injected syphilis would be considered unethical, so that experiment would not be allowed to be conducted. Now the more I scroll down Ken Ring's page, the more bullshit I come across. Like this golden one right here. Dr. Judy Mikovits, did I say that right? Pretty much says it all here. Hold on, let me google that for a second. Dr. Judy Mikovits, there we go. Oh, what a surprise! She's an anti-vaxxer, and she has made discredited claims. Here's a top tip for anyone that wants to make themselves seem valid. Do not post information from people that have been discredited. But anyway, let's go through each of Ken's claims there. Viruses can't travel. So it really depends on what Ken means by travel. Can a virus just hop off someone and walk 50 miles to the nearest person to infect them? No, it can't. But can someone cough on someone and get that other person infected? Yes, that absolutely can happen. Nobody dies from coronavirus. Try telling that to the people that have lost friends and family due to coronavirus, you insensitive prick. Fauci and Gates did it for the money. They did what exactly for the money? Their job? I mean, that's actually a good reason to do your job, for money. I mean, he's probably talking about something else in that video, but I can think of much better things to spend my time on than two hours listening to a nutcase. Vaccines and injections are lethal! But they're not though. When I was a kid, I got my MMR vaccine. More recently, I got the HPV vaccine. And I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but I'm still alive. Social distancing is a joke! Except it's not a joke. Putting coronavirus aside for a second, I actually like the fact that we're doing social distancing for other reasons. Like this year, I might not have to deal with two to three colds. And that would be wonderful. So far, all I've had to deal with this year is glandular fever. Now Ken has also posted this image, which there are many things wrong with. For example, the calculation for percentage of the world population has too many zeros in it. It should be 0.016% of the world population. Is that nitpicking? Yes, but it seems a little less scarier when you add in more zeros. Now, what do you think might be the most glaring issue with this comparison? If you answered with, the Spanish flu pandemic has ended whilst we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, then you are absolutely correct. These types of comparisons are very bad, 
because we don't have all the information on coronavirus yet. Because as of recording this video, there are over 3 million cases and over 200,000 deaths. Much more than that image says. Also, so what if the Spanish flu was worse? It doesn't mean that the coronavirus isn't bad. It's like saying that killing a couple of people isn't bad because the Holocaust was way worse. Now, that does give a good idea of what Ken Ring is posting about, but I wouldn't want to be misrepresenting him now, would I? Because according to Kenring, even though he's posted absolutely nothing about the general consensus on coronavirus, he's just presenting both sides. And also, universities are a big part of the fake news industry. Hey, uh, AB Science? Yeah? You work in a university. Can you explain to Ken why his statement is wrong? Oh, do I have to? I just finished recording a thing on this sixth car crash of a lecture on magnetism. What? Electromagnet? No, I mean Ken Ring, not Ken Wheeler. They all seem to have the same first name for some reason. Oh, fucking hell. Ken Ring, Ken Ham, Ken Wheeler, and I suppose Kent Hovind. I thought that after season six, all the Kennys were dead. But yeah, sure. Academics are all in on it because in an industry where the one thing that will kill your career is being dishonest, it is best to lie through your teeth. Ken's statement makes about as much sense as saying that the main objective of a business is to lose money and that the primary goal of the military is to lose wars or even that Karen never wants to speak to the manager. And this is a key issue with dialogue on topics like this. Scientists talk of evidence and theory whilst being very careful with the wording as their careers and livelihood depend on it. Pseudoscience fuckknuckles like Ken Ring don't need to bother with these restrictions at all. They can use emotive language, talk about proof and facts whilst not having to care about accuracy. Their livelihoods are not dependent on them being correct. It is dependent on them establishing their notoriety as being an anti-establishment rebel and exploit people's blind mistrust in our institutions so they can sell these people their books. Well said. And as I implied before, Ken Ring is not actually presenting both sides. If he was presenting both sides, he would post things that agree with the general consensus on coronavirus. But he doesn't. And saying that you're presenting both sides is not a valid excuse for posting false information. Because even though it may seem like there are two sides to an argument, if one of those sides is devoid of all rationality, it's not worth presenting as truth. Just as an example, my farts can cure cancer, but no one's going to take that seriously because it's devoid of all rationality. And on an added note, if you disagree with my views on 5G, I will be hosting an open debate where anyone that disagrees with me is more than welcome to come along and explain why they think that 5G is bad. So, thank you for making it to the end of this video. An extra special thank you to What Jesus, Holmes, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Wolfie, Stringer News One. Ash Panash, Curtis Reynolds, Curvy New Yorker, Sisyphus, and Mori for their generous support over on Patreon. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.